Well, hi again, everybody. We are back for our final match of the afternoon. This is a one-loss side match between Torsten Homan and Brandon Schuff. Uh, the loser of this match will finish 9th through 12th. The winner will continue and uh, move on to the, to the uh, top eight and return to play tomorrow, I think. But nevertheless, it is the last one that uh, we'll be streaming for you today. And I want to say once again on behalf of Q Sports International and Bad Boys Billiard Productions, our tournament sponsors, how much they and we here at TAR appreciate all the great support from each and every one of you who's been with us, not only today, but over the years as well. You know, TAR has uh, kind of come to a, a halt now on uh, what they've been doing over the past uh, five or six years, and especially the last couple of years with the challenge matches at the studio in Vegas. And uh, if it wasn't for our loyal followers like you guys, we, uh, we wouldn't have been able to do all of those things. But they are preserved for history, 39 tar matches. And uh, the last one, of course, very special between Efren and Shane. And a lot of that stuff we think hopefully will wind up on uh, video on demand for your viewing pleasure. And I can tell you that um, somewhere in the near future, as soon as Justin's able to do it with all he's got to do to eventually close down the studio, et cetera. The, every match from the uh, U.S. bar table here that was streamed will go up on YouTube. So you'll be able to see your favorite players in action here probably within a couple of weeks, if not sooner. And I also want to take a second, too, to just recognize uh, Andy and Tim once again uh, behind the cameras and behind the TriCaster here. Uh, Justin has uh, duties elsewhere uh, with uh, making sure the pay-per-view works and dealing with stuff like that. So we've got uh, Andy and Tim doing the switching and the cameras and running everything to make sure that the stream is perfect, just the way you're used to seeing it, and uh, it has been. And although she's not here and she participated and uh, helped, did a yeoman camera work for us for so many times up there in Tara. I want to say thanks to Amy, too, for all she did working with Tim and Andy at the studio. A nice carom there by Toasty, and he's got a shot in the side on the one ball. And if you didn't know by now, that's his nickname. It's T-O-A-S-T-I, Toasty. But whether you say Thorsten or Torsten, both are actually correct pronunciations. I would think the official German pronunciation is most likely Torsten, and the Americanized version is Thorsten, but he does not uh, mind either. And Torsten had one of the greatest years in professional pool in this past year in 2013. He's originally from Fulda, Germany. He's been living in Jacksonville, Florida since about 2006. Matter of fact, just a, by way of a little little story uh, to fill some, <laughs> fill some time here. Um, Torsten won the very first uh, IPT event, not the King of the Hill event that was in Florida, but the first of the two that were held in 06. And um, it was, uh, first was the World Open and then the North American, but he uh, won the World Open, which was at the Venetian. He beat Marlon Manalo in the finals and he won 300000 or $350,000, I think, first place. And that's when Kevin had the money, and he did get paid. And I believe that's when Torsten bought a house in Jacksonville, Florida, and he's been there ever since. But um, 
and he uh, now takes a one to nothing lead here as well. But nevertheless, in 2013, uh, Toasty knocked off the uh, Accustats Straight Pool Invitational, beating uh, five of the greatest straight pool players in the world in a round robin format. And then he went on to win his third World 14 1 championship in New York, having also won that. Um, in 2006 and in 2011. He then went to Doha and won the World Nine Ball Championship. That's his second. Uh, and 10 years apart, he won the very first of his majors in 2003. His breakthrough performance in Cardiff. Won c the story was that Torsten, w on his last amount of money, went to the, the World Nine Ball in Cardiff. He was like a 100 to one shot underdog and he had already made up his mind that had he not won any prize money there, he was going to give up pool and do something else for a living. Well, he won the event, and he won $60,000. And that springboarded him into being able to remain a professional. Oh, Brandon got kicked right in. That's, that's pretty cold there. But nevertheless, uh, 10 years later, he wins the World Nine Ball title again. And then he went on after that to win the Maryland F Straight Pool Championship, which is a very difficult event to win. Straight Pool is very popular in Maryland, and there's been some great names that have won that event over the years. So four major titles there uh, in 2013. And um, I would expect more out of him now in the upcoming years, too. Certainly, he has a place probably reserved for him at some point in the Hall of Fame as well. But he is a straight pool genius. He has a high run of 404. He did that in 2000. He's also uh, a former runner-up in the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. Did that also in 2004. He's got a BCA Open Nine Ball Championship. And he's also a former China Open, Japan Open, and Philippine Open champion. So he's got credentials all around the world. And he is a fine, fine person, a real gentleman, great representative of our game. turnover there by Thorsten and Brandon back at the table following a scratch on the break and a much needed opportunity here to prevent Thorsten from running out to nothing. I do want to apologize to you listeners out there. I am unfortunately uh, suffering from a, a bit of a head cold here that I picked up the day I got here. Just what I wanted to do. But um, I'll get through it, and I hope you'll just uh, bear with me here every now and then. I've got to do a little maintenance. But there's no place else I'd rather be. And just like that, Brandon takes advantage of the gift back from Mr. Holman, and he ties the match up now at one apiece. If you were looking on AZ Billiards in the last uh, four or five days, you probably saw the announcement of the upcoming Q Sports International eight and 10 ball invitationals that are going to happen during the uh, BCA Pool League National 8-Ball Championships in July at the Rio. And um, very, very interesting formats and uh, groups there. And after this break here, or if we get a second during the rack, I'll give you a little more detail on that. Nothing. I think 
friend that can get a piece of the one. I'm not sure what he can do with it. Anyway, while Brandon is studying this, um, back to the, the CSI in, uh, in July, there's going to be a 8-ball uh, and a 10-ball invitational. And they're going to consist of each, each, each uh, discipline uh, will consist of 16 players that will be invited uh, by CSI. And um, the way that uh, it's going to get structured is there players invited from the Philippines, four from the USA, uh, four from Europe, and four from Asia. And that'll make up the 16 players for each event. Now, there may be different players participating, and there may be some players that will be invited into play in both the eight ball and the 10 ball, but it'll be strictly invitational. And they'll all be guaranteed a certain amount of money. And they'll play four different disciplines, I believe. Uh, excuse me, they will play, uh, you know, of course, the two disciplines, but they will play uh, in groups of four. So each 16 players will be set off, and there'll be four groups of four, and within each group of four, there'll be one player from each of those four countries that I mentioned, and they will play a round robin. And at the end of the round robin play within their group, I believe, and I may be wrong on this, uh, either the top one or the top two will then go into a uh, single elimination playoff for the uh, for the title, and I believe $8,000 first place. But all players will be assured of a payday in one form or another. And I don't believe there's an entry fee since it's an invitational. So look forward for more details on that as the invitations are go out to the players and the acceptances or lack thereof are announced. And that will take place in July in conjunction with the uh, BCAPL nationals and uh, you can go to playcsipool.com and take a look at the, the dates and uh, maybe go ahead and start to make some plans to book a room while the uh, while the getting is still good and of course for those of you that are going to play in the uh, national eight ball championships there will be no charge for spectator admission to the u.s opens I mean, excuse me, to the Invitationals. I've still got U.S. Opens on my mind here, but uh, be able to come in and watch those for absolutely no charge. So a lot to look forward to. Very interesting and uh, different format. Players will be hand-picked. And it will be quite an honor to, to be one of that group. So let's get back to what's going on here. Torsten with a jump cue out. One to one here in a race to seven. These two are in the top 12. Right now there's 12 players left in the event. And the loser here will be ninth through 12th. The winner will be minimum seventh, eighth. I know of one match on the outer table uh, that's playing now. It's Darren Appleton is playing Sal Butera. And I think Scott Frost is playing Justin Bergman. And there's one more match that I just do not know the, who the players are. I didn't get to see that at, on the uh, monitor when I went up to check, but it's still, uh, you know, it's still going to come down to who can be chained in two sets in a row, race to seven, ten ball on a bar box, and if anybody has a an idea of who might be able to do that, uh, eh, let us know. Because I'm not sure that it's going to be that uh, likely. I'm not saying it's not possible, but to beat that man two consecutive sets will be a monumental task. Let's just put it that way. He hit that really good because he didn't want to have to deal with the 5-8. Now he looks like he can play the 5 right in the corner and hold there for the 6.
right, two to one for Brandon and his break in game number four. I don't know if you remember last match, but uh, after four, four or five games of the match and Brendan had no success on his break, he took a little extra time in, uh, in uh, orienting the rack. I don't know if you recall, he, he laid his cue stick across the table to make sure he had the rack, you know, perfectly squared up. And he took a little bit of extra time racking the balls. And it uh, worked out well for him. And it looks like he's uh, trying to do that here again, make sure he has them just the way he likes them. So he's got him ready, and here we go in game number four. Yep. Good break there. Could have got a little better roll in the one ball, but you could see that he took a little bit off. He made sure he hit him nice and square. He just popped the cue ball straight back, made the deuce. And if he wants to shoot anything offensively here, he's got to bank the one into the four. Otherwise, it's going to be safe up here, maybe between the five and the nine, or behind the five and the nine with the cue ball. You could also put the one down here, but... Uh, I think I'd want the one on the other end of the table from the three being the next ball if he chooses to play safe. Just get that one across the table and uh, he'll have a pretty good amount of balls to hide behind if that's what he decides to do. He wants to shoot, but I think I think the safe is the shot here. And that little graze off the three might have helped him a little bit. Even if Thorsten can see the one, at best he's got he's a one eight. He has called it. He's playing the eight ball. Torsten playing with a Lucassi custom, I believe. It may be a hybrid, but it's definitely a Lucassi. Nice shot. Oh, that was really well hit. Nice shot, Torsten. It is a hybrid he's playing with. Five goes in the pocket, he's going to play the three ball in. So he's figuring out what's the best path to it off the four. I 
I think the fact that the six ball is down there uh, near the upper right corner prevents him from maybe playing the four on the side and coming one rail, you know, down up and down. So he may wind up just opening it up. Oh, he made it worse. It may still go, but now it's uh, a lot trickier to get on. Although he does have a pretty good angle on the four ball, he may have to draw around the nine five. And if it doesn't go, he can certainly go into it with the cue ball, either by drawing at it or coming one rail. But I, I would rather draw into it than hit it from the back and take a chance on getting locked behind the nine ball. Okay, it does go then. All right, two to two. And Torsten to break here in rack five. Remember, nine ball begins tomorrow around uh, one o'clock Pacific. We won't uh, be streaming nine, I don't think, at that time. I think we'll still be streaming ten ball for you. But nevertheless, it does get underway tomorrow at one o'clock. And of course, they'll be continuing play in the uh, U.S. Open one pocket. And I believe also the women's nine ball division will get underway probably late in the afternoon tomorrow. take that break every time. Three balls a little snug, but actually straight in on the two will get him to the three. And it'll also give him a, a good an angle to get to the four, either by stopping or going between the six and the eight. quite straight in, but it's workable. Just probably float this forward six inches or so. and strengths because of his prowess at straight pool is being able to bump balls with the cue ball or nudge a cluster, open this up with, with exceptional control. And that's how you become three-time world straight pool champion and won 404 balls. But of course, it does translate to all the other games. And 
he certainly showed us there that he's able to do it when necessary. And he's made quick work of this rack. See if I can get you an update on some of the scores on the outer tables here. I've got a view of the uh, Appleton Butera match, and I can see the beads, so I'll have to wait till the game's over to see who slides a bead. But Darren's at the table, and he's on the nine ball. And Brandon's ready to break here in game number six. Nothing yet. Okay, Darren is shooting the 10. And he made it. So let me see if he'll slide a bead. And he's done that. Darren Appleton, six. Salbutera, two. Race to seven. That's also a ninth through 12th place match. like uh, Justin Bergman playing Jason Klatt, but that's too far for me to be able to see the beads. But back over here, Torsten with a great opportunity off of a dry break to pull ahead by two racks clear and be breaking. here on the three ball because he's got to deal with the five six over there he wanted a different angle so we'd have the angle to the forward open those up now he's got a lot of work to do I mean the five might squeeze by it doesn't look it on the monitor but we've been we've been deceived before by how he plays this, whether the five goes or not. And it looks like it does. <laughs> Depending on the speed here, the pocket should accept this. Might hit the diamond, but it still should go.
ball wiggled and wobbled and still fell down. Now, no look at the two. So I would expect to push out here. Not sure I would push by the eight because it leaves too easy of a, of a return safety and Brandon will take it. But I think that's probably where he's going to wind up going. And I'd be surprised if Brandon didn't take this and try to put him over there, maybe near the six ball. He could go the other way, too, and try to put him behind the nine. But I would never give this back. running into the nine is not what he had planned. Good judgment there. I don't think there was any reason to go ahead and try to shoot that two in the side from there when he knows he can lock Brandon up this way. And I don't think he can get to that long rail on the right as you're looking. He might be able to, but if he does, he's not going to get a lot of movement off the two ball because he's going to have to twist it a little bit to lengthen it out. I guess he just decided to make sure he hit it and take what it had give him. And he didn't really sell out anything other than the fact that he's going to come back to the table, most likely being hooked again. It's going to be Thorsten's choice here because the ball was pocketed in, in illegally. In other words, it, he didn't play it in the pocket. 
but he did make it. And that means the opponent has the option. It's no real choice here. I mean, you're going to shoot. Sal Buterres fighting back over there from 6-2 down. It's now 6-4. Darren leads, and it's Darren's break. And should Torsten pocket the 10 here, he will take the 5-2 lead. Uh, that's pretty hard to take right there if you're Brandon Schuff. He just played a really, uh, really tough match against Carlo Beato. He was down 2 nothing. He fought back, took a 5-2 lead. He actually had a 6-2 lead. Carlo was coming back. Brandon made a nice out to win the match, but it it's all seems to have just gone wrong for him here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> But Torsten overshot his mark there by quite a bit. Now this is going to play a lot more difficult. Well, Brandon has no choice here but to call the two ball. I mean, regardless of what he does. And there don't seem to be a lot of good paths to get to it. I don't think he can go three rails. Um, I think he needs to... Because he, he, I don't know if he can get under the seven there, between the seven and the eight in the side, he might be able to lengthen it out and go three rails. But that's about the only path I see, unless he wants to load it up with right mass A, shoot it straight down into the first diamond on the short rail and come two rails out. But I think this is the better choice. He's going to make it, but is he going to scratch? Nope. And he got shape. That was nicely done. Not out of the woods yet, though.
Well, that's hard to do. That's hard to hit that ball and not make it. I think he's... Uh, I, 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 you couldn't do that if you were trying to. stop there and play the seven eight carom that'll move the seven to where it can be made yeah rather than uh, try to do something funny Horston reaches the hill now at 6-2, and he has an opportunity to break and win the match right here. Hello, one ball. Well, he's got two ways to go to the two. He can come off the long rail there and come between the at three nine at the two, or he can just draw the ball two feet and shoot between the nine and the five which is the more uh, less risky play. But it's really a question of uh, what he feels comfortable about. Either angle will get him from the two to the three. Yeah. Took the safe route, I don't blame It bad.
Well, he's still alive. Got a long way to go, but he's still there. 6-3 now in Brandon's break. He's got to control the cue ball here. Absolutely cannot scratch. It got kicked. He doesn't want the one to go in. Well, actually, he does now, and it didn't. Now that the two got in the way. And there ain't no place to push. You got to try to make this ball. think he can get in there between the two and the rail and the four is taking up a little bit of space for the one rail kick he might have to go to the right side of the six with a lot of left and lengthen it out yeah, right there by that piece of chalk and then of course he's got to worry about following it in good oh no don't do that to the poor guy god damn it maybe make finally make a good shot like that and got a bad roll on the break come with a shot like that and, and when stuff like that happens you, you kind of think maybe you know it's not your day but he's still at the table Is this shot with shape? That's the best shot of the day. Well, that's two great kicks in a row right there. This guy's got a lot of heart. Never, never gives up. here oh man oh boy oh, got to watch the cue ball flying off that cushion if he try to cut this in come back and hit the tip a second time i don't think he can risk that he's got a kick at it and that's what he's doing he called it Well, he missed it on the good side, but it's a big ball to kick in if Toasty can't cut it. It's a pretty routine two-rail kick. And it's a real big ball the way it's sitting. Don't want 
approach this bump. Perfect. Yeah, it's going to be all she wrote now. Feel bad for Brandon there. He made two great kick shots in this game. He just couldn't get a break. <laughs> All right, he conceded, and Toasty moves on. Brandon finishes ninth through 12th. That's going to conclude our programming for the day on the live stream, everybody. Uh, in a few minutes, Tim and Andy will start the loop at today's play. You'll be able to see all of that. And we'll be back with you at 10 o'clock Pacific tomorrow morning with uh, some, some more 10-ball action, uh, final eight players, or maybe final six, but nevertheless, 10 a.m. So on behalf of CSI and Bad Boys Billiard Productions and the whole crew here at TAR, thanks, everybody, for watching. Good night, and we'll see you in the morning.